Welcome back. A newly elected government in Ontario has promised billions more for new long-term care beds, and more than half of those are believed to be privately run. A new report, though, from the Canadians for Tax Fairness says billions of public funding that could have improved the lives of the elderly at for-profit care homes has instead been diverted to profit for decades. D.T. Cochran is co-author of that report. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So we obviously the uh, whether something was private or not for profit became a focal point during the pandemic. Tragically, uh, DT, because the privately run for profit homes didn't do as well. And when it came to the death rates from COVID, what have your findings been on that front? Can we say conclusively that the elderly were safer in non profit homes? We think that conclusion is absolutely confirmed by the data. Uh, about 40 percent of the beds in Ontario are controlled by the 10 biggest for-profit firms and they had about 60 percent of the deaths and we think that this can be directly connected to the diversion of public funding from care into corporate profits. So one of the, the, the things, of course, that we would ask when we see that, and the report you've done is uh, is worth a read, and, and you've, you've pointed out that this is nothing illegal going on here. Some of the funds allocated, the tax dollars, public money, is uh, it's unassigned. So these homes can do what they want with it. Is one possible answer here better regulation of private homes? Not to say that we should get rid of them, but that we need a better oversight by government of what happens there. We think there's an even more basic step that should be taken, which is just greater transparency. We had to estimate how much profit was being diverted from public funds because most of these homes don't have to disclose their financial information. Given how vital public funding is for these companies, mm -hmm. we think that they should have to reveal to Ontarians just exactly how they're making use of this money. So greater transparency should be the first step towards improving the system. You know, when we look to improve systems, we often think uh, when we tend to be pro-market, pro-capitalism, uh, if one is, that the uh, the kind of profit motive will make things more efficient, that things will run more smoothly. Uh, where there's often a view that the private sector will run things better than government might. Is this, a, is this a case where you would say there might just be an exception where to save money, you're taking it out of the service of, uh, of care to the elderly, that maybe we just don't want to even have people go down that path? Yeah, if profit is supposed to be a reward to extraordinary efficiency and innovation, then you should expect that to look like something, say, lower death rates during a global pandemic. And we saw the opposite. So what this looks like is instead of putting the money towards improving the care environment, uh, the money was diverted to the corporations. The, the unrestricted money that can be claimed as profit could be used to pay nurses and personal support workers better. Uh, the Ministry of Health suggests that it should be used on things like housekeeping, laundry, food service, the exact types of things that absolutely went wrong during the pandemic, as seen in the report by the Canadian military on their experience in the homes with devastating outbreaks. Not a ton of time here, but would it shock you if just about half of the new funding for long-term care beds, which is we know needed, went to for-profit private homes? Considering that those homes, many of the homes receiving those beds, had far worse performance during the pandemic, it's beyond shocking. It's hard to fathom the reasoning to justify this. If they are going to go this route, increased transparency is key. DT, it's great to have you with us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. DT Cochran is an economist with the Canadians for Tax Fairness. Time now for the takeaway and a crying shame. As the pandemic struck, one of the most vulnerable groups were those without a place to shelter, having a home in the first place being a necessary precondition of a lockdown. Meanwhile, existing shelter spaces for the unhoused could no longer accommodate as many people in order to maintain some semblance of distancing. To try to meet the needs of this group, cities got creative and, to their great credit, did so with speed. In Toronto, hotels were converted into shelters and with some success. As the pandemic ends, about 40% of Toronto's shelter capacity is in hotels. 
but a report from the Auditor General of Toronto lays bare some shocking behavior. Some of the hotel operators charged the city for things they had no business charging. On that list, a fee hotels charge tourists to help them pay for tourism promotion. There were also excess charges for some services rendered, according to the audit, and in some cases, hotels took fees for rooms that remained unoccupied. In total, it adds up to more than $13 million in charges the city needn't have paid, an amount that could have housed and fed another 140 people in hotels for a year. With cities busy reviewing their plans for the future and the hotel program high on a list of expenses some will want to cut, it's a shame to find that what was otherwise a creative and dignified solution for a vulnerable group may instead have been a way to exploit the system. My takeaway, it's hard to believe that anyone would intentionally make a cash grab in the middle of a pandemic, so the benefit of the doubt should apply here. But for any of the operators who were called out, it might also be a good time to return some of that cash. That's Taking Stock for this week. I'm Amanda Lang. Thanks for being with us.